Fortresses of mortar and stone, great bastions of bulwarks, walls rising in vertical splendor to repel any would-be foes from the ramparts. The castles and fortifications of the Imperial Legion are the very stamp upon the land that heralds the might and strength of the Empire. Fortifications that say, here, here law and order prevails, and all invasions and rebellions will be crushed under an iron fist. From the palisades of Frostmoth in the north, to the gloomy towers of Buckmoth in the ash, to the mighty walls of Ebonheart in the south. The Empire's reach is seemingly everywhere, fortresses guarding against all who would oppose the Imperial peace. Great empires are made not by conquest alone, but by fortifications, infrastructure, the ability to project power. And at those fortifications are, naturally, the subject of today's modern day. For today, we're showcasing Dalara Imperial Forts by Dalara 1000. And now, the keen-eyed and observant among you will note that this is not the first time that we've showcased Dalara Imperial Forts. Uh, indeed, it is not even the first time that we've showcased it for our Mother Day series. Uh, we originally showcased it back in 2021, uh, but, you know, the mod has undergone a bit of a rather significant makeover with a major update released in 2024. And uh, that update includes uh, optimizing meshes, improving performance, updating the look and feel of each of the Imperial Legion forts, adding new compatibility for other popular mods with new modular options, and new cosmetic improvements and interior expansions, and just a whole lot more. In short, Adelaire uh, Imperial forts looks just a whole lot different from the mod that we showcased in 2021 and it begs to be showcased again, and uh, so we shall. Uh, this, uh, this might be just a bit longer than our typical Mother Day video. Uh, so for convenience, uh, you'll find this video is divided by each of the Imperial Forts and Castles in Morrowind, with uh, timestamps just linked down below. Uh, there are seven Imperial Legion Forts in Morrowind, uh, not counting the ruin of Fort Farmall and we'll be covering all of them with Dalera Imperial Forts here today. So let us begin in the frigid far north with the Imperial Fort Frostmoth, last and only bastion of the Empire on the Wild Isle of Solstein. Right, to begin with, uh, you can see the original fort just right here, uh, both from the vanilla game and from Solstein Tomb of the Snow Prince. The vanilla game version is uh, fairly dull, you know, as far as pure forts go, it, it just it makes a simple square with a few towers, it, just like any other pure fort in vanilla Morrowind. The base Solstein Tomb of the Snow Prince version is uh, much more visually exciting, you know, it's got a lighthouse, but it still has that same basic layout from the vanilla fort. And now, for comparison, here's Fort Frostmoth with Dalera Imperial Forts, and now just fully compatible with Solstein Tomb of the Snow Prince. And indeed, for this showcase, uh, we will be using the Solstein Tomb of the Snow Prince version. Uh, because, uh, honestly, like, who is playing Vanilla Blood Moon these days? Like, you, you got Solstein Tomb of the Snow Prince right there, like, you should be playing with that. But uh, anyway, and with this, Fort Frostmoth is truly just visually distinct from all the other impure forts in Morrowind. It is a frontier fortification, and now appropriately looks apart, with raised groundworks, palisades, and supplemental wooden watchtowers. It lacks the permanence of the original Fort Frostmoth, as it should, you know, it's a frontier fortification. It's not supposed to look permanent. Instead of a square, the fort is more circular in design, meant to ward off attacks that could come from any direction. The courtyard itself is raised with only two entrances, giving defenders a clear advantage of height against any would-be besiegers. Inside the courtyard, you'll find an outdoor smithy, a drinking well for drawing water, outdoor fire pits for cooking and a training area just all suitably roughly constructed for that frontier view. The central fortress tower is similar to the one in the Vanilla game. 
hosting the primary barracks and offices in a central bulwark of stone. With upper levels that provide arrow slits where archers can rain fire from above. A separate tower composes the armory and an upper wooden structure, and that can be used as a watchtower, and much of it open to the exterior world space. With the Source Time Team of the Snow Prince version, and not only does this overhaul cover the main fort, but it also covers the docks and lighthouse, providing new, unique models to the entire fort. With lots of new clutter and detailing to make Fort Frostmaw feel like just a truly lived in location. One home to the Imperial Legion, however cold and low on morale they may be. Moving from the frontier to the heart of Imperial influence in Vardenfell, we descend to the southern castle and fortress of Evanholt. Here you can see how this looked in the vanilla game. A design that, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, while it does provide some defensive bulwarks against attack, is uh, nonetheless rather open for what is supposed to be the seat of Imperial power in this region, and the home of Duke Drin. But no more! Here is a majestic, fortified, bristling layered defensive fortress that Evanheart should have always been, with great towers of verticality. Walls, ramparts to repel even the fiercest of invaders. A great glorious sight of verticality upon the horizon. A bastion that seems to shout, The Empire is here to stay! Woe upon those who would oppose Imperial rule! It is a transformative overhaul that clearly rebuilds Ebonheart into the defensive seat of Imperial power it was always meant to be. Now you'll find this fortress is divided into four distinct layers. The docks, the most open and least defended part of Ebonhaut, though still boasting towers and ramparts. The outer courtyard, defended by heavy set walls and a drawbridge, where the majority of Ebonhaut services lie, including the tavern and a new smithy shop and alchemy shop, along with the Skyrim and Argonian missions. The inner courtyard, defended by yet taller walls and with a noticeably small gate, bottlenecking would-be attackers and making them vulnerable to defenders casting down stones and arrows and hot oil from the turrets and ramparts above. At the inner courtyard is also home to Fort Hawkmoth, and it is suitably defended as Evanhart's primary garrison. Finally, there is Evanhart Castle itself. Divided off on its own island, with additional ramparts and turrets to make any charge across the bridge a costly one. And not only is this overhaul functional and practical, but it is awe-inspiringly beautiful. I dare say the new Castle Ebonheart makes Delera Imperial Forts one of the best castle mods from Morrowind. Just, you know, all on its own. It is the ultimate Ebonheart overhaul, though naturally that does mean it will have a few conflicts. Uh, it'll noticeably conflict with Imperium, Castle Ebonheart, Majestic Ebonheart, and Izzy's Ebonheart. Though it should be compatible with Ebonheart Lighthouse and, uh, theoretically, uh, most of the outer expansion mods for Ebonheart. Uh, though I haven't tested that yet, so, you know, don't quote me on that. But either way, uh, this does include a few new interiors, unlike the aforementioned Smithy and Alchemy Shop which provide a few more services for you to find when you're visiting Ebonhaut, and it also helps to just uh, fill out the outer courtyard a bit. But uh, beyond new interiors, uh, this also makes a few changes to Ebonhaut's vanilla chambers, including a gorgeous new audience hall for Duke Drin, with an impressively large desk and daylight streaming in from the castle windows. At those large imperial style castle windows have been added just all across Ebonhard's interiors, with functional day night cycles, uh, so you'll see light streaming in during the day, but the windows will be dark at night. Uh, from the lower chambers of Ebonhard Castle to the Argonian Mission, the Imperial Chapel, uh, which has also seen a slight layout change, and the dining halls of Fort Hawkmoth. These windows are a gorgeous, lightweight addition to these vanilla game interiors. But uh, that's just about all there is to see here for Ebonheart, so let's jump across the aisle to arguably Vanilla Morrowind's worst Imperial Legion fort, the notorious Wolverine Hall. Dysfunctional, paradoxical, infamously confusing, 
Wolverine Hall in Vanilla Morrowind was a fort in name only. It had none of the functional amenities that a fort needs beyond a few walls. No garrison, no barracks, no armory, no real defensive functionality to speak of. It is, uh, without question, a Morrowind's worst in Pure Legion Fort. Except for maybe Fort Darius. Uh, that one's not great either. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, not so anymore. For Delaire and Pure Forts transforms Wolverine Hall into a better equipped and better built fort. Uh, which, albeit, you know, still one of the small forts of Morrowind, at least has the appearance of a functional fortress. Wolverine Hall now has multiple towers, an inner and outer courtyard, with a dividing wall just as extra protection against incursion. Ramparts with turrets, archery nooks, and bundles of arrows at the ready. Each of the new towers has upper levels in the exterior wall space, allowing for an archer's nest to rain down death from above, or a lookout to spot an enemy force from a ways away. The courtyard, of course, is now fully detailed, with a cooking site, a drinking well, a few little just training areas, and other bits of clutter. With strong, thick walls and imposing towers, it, uh, it remains to be seen how well Warring Hall would actually hold up against a, a rebellion by the mage lords of Great House Tavani. But at least it looks, you know, a little more formidable now. And uh, this overhaul doesn't just cover the exterior. It also overhauls the interiors, more so even than the other Imperial Legion forts. While some of the vanilla layout remains, it has been expanded. So the Imperial Shrine, for instance, now has a larger set of quarters, with dining for the priests, and a proper chapel with those just uh, scenic large glass windows. It, uh, it doesn't have the verticality of Wolverine Hall overhauled, uh, or the Wolverine Hall, but, you know, it's still an improvement over the vanilla design. Uh, these expansions also extend to the Fighters Guild and Mages Guild, which both now have large windows to let in natural daylight, as well as expanded quarters for the Mages and Fighters to sleep, proper dining areas, and just uh, all the other amenities as befits a Guild Hall. I uh, will say that uh, while the interior layout of Wolverine Hall has been completely changed, it, uh, it still leaves something to be desired in terms of navigation. But, as a note, again, a Delirium Pure Fort is modular, so if you prefer one of the other just numerous overhauls of Wolverine Hall, you can use one of those alongside the other Delirium Pure Forts. But, uh, anyway, just uh, jumping back to the Ascadian Isles, uh, let's take a look at Fort Plesiad. Like Wolverine Hall, Plesiad had a fairly simplistic design in Vanilla Morrowind. It was rectangular, with little to no detail in the courtyard itself, and just a handful of stubby little towers. The Lara's version is fairly similar in terms of the overarching layout and shape, but obviously just vastly more detailed and improved. All of that unused court space is gone, replaced with more towers and a more detailed courtyard environment. With outdoor dining, a blacksmith, training areas, an archery range, a log pile and chopping shed for firewood, and just all sorts of other little details that really bring this fortress to life. And now, uh, compared to the other Legion forts and the Lair forts, uh, Plesiad isn't quite as uh, heavily fortified. It has ramparts, yes, the turrets, towers, the bundles of arrows and arches patrolling the walkways. It is still very much a formidable bastion of imperial power, imposing in many ways. Uh, but it doesn't have the extra defensive layers as seen with Ebonheart and Wolverine Hall. Uh, Plesiad is, uh, after all, uh, one of the more quiet and peaceful postings an imperial trooper could be assigned to. Uh, there's not much beyond the village and nearby plantations. You know, no immediate potential threats from rebellion. Except, maybe the Dren plantation. You know, it's not really clear what they're up to over there. But uh, still, the towers and ramparts do provide a clear line of sight in all directions. You know, should an attack ever arise. 
that Pthesiad is well positioned to defend against any such attack. Sitting atop a hill with passages in the walls that provide turrets facing every direction. And again, a, a lot of these towers have interiors in the exterior world space, meaning you can look directly into them and through them, which is just such a neat addition, if also still a little heavy on the FPS. Uh, and of course, uh, this Plesiad overhaul also provides new streetlights just uh, throughout the village of Plesiad. A rather scenic addition, especially in the early morning hours, as you can see here. But uh, the big change for the interiors is a new barracks for the Imperial Guards, with more of those just lovely big glass windows. Otherwise, the vanilla interiors have seen just a slight overhaul with a new big banquet table and fireplace in the Grand Hall, and more windows in the Commander's Quarters, just giving them a rather scenic look. The South Wall has also just been uh, completely rearranged, you know, to fit the new layout of Plesiad's defensive walls. And uh, now, just moving on to some of the more traditional Imperial Legion Forts in Morrowind, let's take a look at the classic Fort Moonmoth, just outside the city of Almora. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but uh, Fort Moonmoth is what I typically think of when I think of an Imperial Legion fort. That iconic Imperial architecture with the Dwemer Towers of Arkenthand in the background, uh, that's one of the first visuals I think of when I think of Morrowind. That said, uh, the fort itself in Vanilla Morrowind, uh, while an iconic location, isn't really the best suited for defense. And as you can see here, that's changed considerably with Delaria Imperial Forts. Once again, Delaria keeps the basic shape and design of Fort Moonmoth, but with more towers, higher and thicker walls, and more defensive bulwarks and adornments. The visuals here are notably different from the Vanilla Fort, but still no less dramatic with Arkenthand in the background with just a touch more verticality added from the new imposing towers to Fort Moonmoth. One thing you will notice here, and at which you may have already seen with the other Impure Forts, is that while Fort Moonmoth is largely the same shape as the original, it does have some curved walls. And uh, you have seen that with Plesiad, Ebonheart, and Wolverine Hall. It's not all just squares and rectangles. And of course, the courtyard is just vastly more detailed, with a well-drawn water, outdoor dining and cooking pits, an archery range, and all the other just various little bits of clutter you'd associate with an active fort. Uh, in terms of interiors, uh, not much has really been changed. Just a few new windows in the main hall, and a new barracks for the garrison. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it, really. Another standard fair and pure fort, uh, we're next taking a look at Fort Buckmoth, up by Aldrin. And uh, once again, uh, you can just uh, you can see the vanilla version here, plain and rather unadorned. And here is the more imposing, more fortified, maybe even just slightly more ominous looking in the fog, a version from Delaire and Pure Fort. A dramatic recreation that adds quite a bit of new verticality to the old Buckmoth Legion garrison. Like with Fort Moonmoth, uh, this is still just a pretty standard fair fort design, with additional towers, covered ramparts, patrolled by arches, uh, plenty of outward facing turrets covering every direction and approach, and a central keep with those large glass windows acting as the fort's anchor. The courtyard is home to a stables, drinking well, a little guardhouse by the gates, training areas, a blacksmith, and a fire pit. And uh, there's also walkways just built inside the walls themselves, adding just another level of potential nooks for archers far from. In terms of interiors, uh, again, uh, Buckmoth Legion Fort hasn't been changed too much, uh, just uh, beyond a few new window additions. Uh, there is a new barracks for the gods, but uh, otherwise, a few changes have been made to the interior layout. Now finally, at long last, uh, we come to the smallest of Morrowind's Imperial Legion fortifications, the tiny little bastion of Fort Darius, uh, more a wall than an actual fort. Uh, here we have the vanilla version, which, you know, isn't terribly much to look at, and uh, here we have the Delaire version, still just a single wall, 
but it does have some, you know, new added verticality with those lovely little towers. The walls are also thicker, and overall it is an improved design on the original Fort Darius, but uh, still maintains that single wall shape. And now, it's also worth noting that this 2024 update of Delirium Pure Forts also has better compatibility with Rocky West Cash. I, you probably can't really tell that though from the video footage here, yet since I'm using just a fairly aggressive compatibility version of Rocky West Cash. But uh, this should work with just most versions of Rocky West Cash out there. But uh, anyway, that's the last of the Impure Forts covered by Delirium Pure Forts. Uh, this turned out a bit longer than I had originally intended, but, you know, suffice to say, Delaire 1000 has created a beautiful set of overhauls, just wonderfully updated for 2024. And with modular options, uh, you can just, you can pick and choose which forts you want to replace. I think they're all fantastic and definitely worth checking out. But uh, that's our mod of the day, so, as always, I've been your host for Golf Guy. Thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, Happy morning, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.